we get how uncertain the future is. We come of age in a complex world, face to face with problems we didn't create. So what's gonna happen next? We are. Because our future is the future. The life we have chosen has prepared us for this. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day. We're gonna save families from disasters and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny. We invite you to join us. The next greatest generation is now. Hello and welcome to the Rally Cry Madden 24 Collegiate Series, presented, of course, by the Army National Guard. I'm FBI Tugboat. I'm here with my man, Rob. Rob, how are we feeling on the day? I'm excited. We've got a lot of great teams. Last week, we saw a lot of Chiefs. We saw a lot of Buffalo. So we're wondering if we're going to get the same folks this week. I assume we're going to see some Chiefs, but maybe we'll get some Eagles in the, in the matchup a little bit. Maybe we'll get some 49ers. We'll see. Would love it. Would love it. What across several several weeks now we have all seen, like you said, a vast majority of Kansas City Chiefs, Eagles once. We even saw the Jets, if you can believe it. We even saw oh, the I Jets saw the Jets a couple times. Yeah, number one. Oh, hey, absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. Different, uh, different uh, feelings. Different teams for different folks. Love it. Yeah, and it's funny because the Jets actually see a little bit more play now because you have Aaron Rodgers on your roster as opposed to you know, we will, the he who will not be spoken, uh, who's not very good at QB. Uh, but Mr. Wilson uh, is not playing uh, <laughs> QB for the Jets. So yes. the Jets are an, a much better option in Madden now that you can have Aaron Rodgers get behind a great defense. Kind of the same thing with Kansas City. You have a great quarterback, and the defense is actually completely underrated uh, by people who are outside of Madden circles normally. Um, but inside of Madden, we know that the Kansas City Chiefs uh, defense can step up. You're 100% right. 100% right. I think it's uh, people just look at Kansas City. They see a couple Super Bowls. They think, oh, hey, offense wins everything. Well, you know, as the age old uh, saying goes, defense wins championships. Kansas City did not get there by mistake, Rob. Yeah. And we, we see that all the time. Same thing with Buffalo. Great defense. Uh, now, just because your team has a great defense doesn't mean you're going to play great defense. And last week we saw a lot of that. Basically, there were not many turnovers in all of the rounds, um, lots of scoring. So it ended up turning into a lot of how do we possess the ball? How do we hold it? Um, what do we do? And do we go for two? Those kind of things. So it is an interesting chess match to see how these players play if uh, the defenses aren't slowing anybody down. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go ahead and at this point, take a look at exactly what it is that we're doing. Cause uh, you know, Madden's awesome. We have a lot of Madden on the day here for you guys. You have a lot of other esports as well, going down here for the Rally Cry Collegiate Series, uh, just consistently doing awesome things for all kinds of colleges across the country. Up first though, we have Cheviot, Nick, and this is gonna be Elijah Freeman playing over under Noah up next, it seems. Noah up next. Yeah. And we've got Noah up next. He, professional Magic, or professional Madden player, uh, very, very good. Um, was not able to take it down last week, uh, but I expect him to be here, be able to take it down, and go ahead and do it. Yeah, absolutely. What we're uh, what first place twenty five hundred dollars, second place fifteen hundred dollars, and of course the opportunity to go forth play uh under the lights and the sounds right that is the nfl draft folks april detroit michigan number one and number two will be playing off the championship round out there third and fourth still going to be able to take down five hundred dollars a piece it's a little, little cash in the pocket just for playing a little, little bit of madden also of course the hbcu fgc series eleven thousand dollars a lot going to be given away here from Street Fighter 6, a lot going to be given away for Guilty Gear Strike, and a lot going to be given away for Tekken 7. Not going to be snubbed as Counter-Strike 2 in Rocket League. Of course, we are here at the $5,000 Madden College Championship. Yeah, and that's uh, not a little bit of change. Uh, that is a lot when it comes mm -hmm. to playing an eSport, coming to play Madden, showing off your skills, and that is exactly what you're going to see. By tuning in today, you're going to see some top-level Madden play. You're going to be able to learn a lot, be able to hopefully add some of these plays to your playbook, and really see actually what kind of defense they're playing. Uh, you're going to see that 
some of these players are going to have very different ways of who they control, who they're going to player control. If they're going to be, you know, last moment trying to get picks, going to be trying to make these tackles. We saw some very interesting uh, attempted tackles uh, <laughs> last week uh, from the users. So we'll see uh, what kind of uh, strategies the players have today. It is a continued skill, uh, not just an offense, throwing that rock out or running the ball, but also uh, controlling your defensive players, having them go where you need to. This point, another very, very important of this is shouting out one of the organizations that make competitions just like this one possible. That is, of course, Army National Guard. Now, Army National Guard is not just full-time service as well. Most of these members go forth and they'll have part-time jobs. They'll be going to school, which, of course, they can get assistance with from the Army National Guard as well. Uh, I think a lot of people just look at it and think like, oh, that's a nine to five or, or, or just a full-time schedule is not the case it is very easy to incorporate that part-time work with the rest of your life yeah and being part of the national guard is being the, the, basically the like the first responders to really bad things that happen when we're talking about natural disasters and things like that so very rewarding career um and it's something that again like you were saying you can do it in addition to all of your normal stuff being able to go to school having your career um it's just most of the people in my family have been in the military, and we are absolutely happy to support the National Guard here as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, a lot of the soldiers in the Guard have the opportunity to gain those transferable skills that aren't just applicable within the Army National Guard as well and apply to many real life situations as well. So big shout out to them once again for sponsoring and putting, helping to put on competitions just like this one, Rob. Yeah. And speaking of competition, again, we've got a couple of really great games today. Uh, I imagine if you play Madden, make sure you don't go anywhere today. We're going to be breaking it down. We're going to be talking about these plays, talk about the mistakes, talk about the good things, bad things, all of the above as these players go through the bracket and try to take this money down. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what qualifier three starting right now, the best news possible if you go forth. And these are all going to be best of threes. There are single elimination, though. No double elimination here on the day, Rob. Uh, this is qualifier three. There's still another qualifier that's going to be next week as well. So even if you lose here on the day in your series and your best of three, there'll still be opportunity next week as well. And, and it's always so exciting, right? Because uh, we get our qualifier, you know, as many people as want to sign up, go forth. And then we take the best of the best, the cream of the crop from there and go on for the next week and kind of determine that one out for to see who gets uh one of those uh one of those slots one of those coveted top four slots yeah and again there are the favorites that we would expect to be able to do that uh i think like i i know noah from madden before so hey. he's always going to be my guy that i think is going to be able to move on but maybe one of them will upset him like they did last week Hey, if we're just talking about experience, Georgiou was all the way through. We, we saw more times on broadcast, I feel like, than we didn't, Rob. That was <laughs> week one, two, and then he finally brought that one down, did win that. I believe that was 2-1 fashion. Let me uh, let me get the name right here of that one, because I believe, yeah, that was Noah up next. So Georgiou took down Noah up next, 2-1. Now Noah up next here to come back, trying to, to get another shot time. in here at the Rally Cry Championship for Matt. Yeah, and I think we're just waiting for our first game to get loaded up, and uh, we're going to see what's going on on that side. But So talk about, uh, I guess on your side of things, do you play Madden? Like, what's, what, what is your experience on this side? Like, I'm, <laughs> on my side, I've played a ton of Madden. I haven't been able to get into it a lot this year, mostly because this whole real life thing, you know, happens. <laughs> and when I get online, the, way uh, the guys like that are in these tournaments just beat me into the ground. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, have you been able to see a lot of Madden this year? Uh, it's fun. It's fun for sure. It is not exactly competitive, what you'd call competitive, especially when I play against some of these, uh, uh, you know, people, YouTube, Twitch, whatever they stream on. Uh, obviously, I have a whole, whole lot of experience, especially as a Carolina Panthers fan. <laughs> this year is just pain. It's just absolute pain. Carolina boy, born and raised, got to play with them at least sometimes. Obviously, the superstars, I'm really trying to play competitively. Like, you're pretty much going to see the same teams uh, here on the day. And most of these rally cry, uh, uh, you know, competitions up to this point, week three now that I'd be using I'm trying to play competitively, but you know, uh, Carolina Panthers can only take you so far, Rob. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're a Panthers fan, playing online uh, with normal rosters is probably not going to be that much fun. As an Eagles fan, it's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, like you said, sometimes you just want to be able to get on, have a good time. And a lot of these guys, you know, when they're not playing in a tournament setting, 
it is they're going to be playing for fun doing it at home just the way that you guys are um and then there's going to be like contingents like my brother who's online every single day playing competitions doing those things um if he was in college right now i'm sh this would be his jam <laughs> he would be on these tournaments all the time so we say the same thing for you at home like if you want to be part of this it is just as easy as you know essentially signing up and getting on um and if you've got the skills this is where you can be able to turn your skills into being able to earn money um and that's not something that's always been around so we really have to say thank you to rally cry and our sponsors to be able to put something like this on and be able to stream it live to you at home so you don't miss any of the action and can see some of your favorite players and your favorite teams and your favorite everything um here uh being streamed uh when these tournaments are going on uh, two points here, Rob. First and foremost, I think we've said this one before. Uh, it is fair to say that collegiate esports opportunities did not exist when you and I were in college. <laughs> uh, just, just laying that one out here for you, folks. Uh, the, the best we had was, you know, just club-based kind of thing, setting up lands for Halo, Call of Duty, uh, other things like this, stuff like this, and then the opportunity, of course, point number two, to go forth and take the number one and number two match and have it performed live in front of the next line, right? The, the NFL draft the next series of players who are going to be coming forth and doing big things in the top professional league of football i, I can't think of a better opportunity take yeah. a look right here cheviot nick and uh that's kansas city chiefs and elijah freeman uh rob sorry no go ahead i was just going to say that we see a lot of Chiefs, and this is going to be the first time I've been able to see the Ravens on stream, and the Ravens are going to bring another very strong defense. And then obviously on the other side of the ball, you're going to have, you know, the MVP over there, um, as well as another strong running game. So I think, you know, if it was me and I'm Elijah Freeman, obviously you would love to be able to air out the ball, score a bunch of points, but I think you're going to, you would hopefully see a really strong run game come from the Ravens, control the ball, um, and be able to hopefully take down the game that way. And if you're the Chiefs, you could do it a lot of different ways. But, you know, most of the time you're going to put that ball into the hands of, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes and let him do his thing. Try to keep Travis Kelsey involved. Yeah, so uh, two big similarities between these teams. First and foremost, obviously, the running quarterbacks, right? Lamar Jackson on one side got some legs on him, and Patrick Mahomes, again, did not make it to the Super Bowl two years in a row now by accident. Second thing is top three tight ends, right? Travis Kelsey's, uh, I, I believe the stat was like he was like third most receiving yards out of all positions, mm -hmm. like two or three years in a row or something like that, and it's absolute insanity. Man can block as well. Mark Andrews over there for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, success for the Ravens, success for Elijah Freeman is going to come off the back of getting Mark Andrews involved. Yeah, and when you talk about running quarterbacks, obviously, you know, Patrick Mahomes is a running quarterback, but n nowhere close, you know, and I let me rephrase. I, I hate to say nowhere close, but I mean, there's just another level for Lamar Jackson when it comes to top end speed, when it comes to being elusive and things like that. And Patrick Mahomes essentially will run when he has to, uh, whereas when you're looking at Lamar Jackson, this man is just... <laughs> Michael Vick 2.0, and we are in the game, and Kansas City is going to start with the ball. I, I don't know. Dr. Kitten, one, of the, one goats, too, but... one of the goats of uh, the kicking game coming up here. Perhaps a better uh, adjective was mobile, uh, right? Because because Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes, he can get that thing slung even there. on the run. Speaking oh, of, on the run, gets hello. up to about the 22 or so right here. No up next, going to be starting their yeah, first defensive thinking, so. opportunity here against Cheviot Nick and the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, and when we saw Noah last week, he was having a really hard time um, defending the passes that were coming onto the interior. Uh, running game, he was really strong there, so I'm not surprised to see more strong play uh, from him here. Uh, looks like we're going to have uh, Cheviot Nick is on Kansas City and Noah's playing the Ravens. Uh, but being able to get second and 11 uh, for everybody at home, here at these tournaments, you are going to see a lot oh my God. <laughs> of this Travis going Kelsey on. open. That is not a great way to start out this drive. Man, oh man, Baltimore is completely blown coverage. Uh, what? You got the double me power up, right, in, mm -hmm. in this game. How about not even single coverage on a man named Travis Kelsey? Hate to see it. Pacheco beaten feet over to the flat, oh. gets up and more. That's going to be about a 13-yard run, 14-yard run there for Pacheco. Yeah, and there was an opportunity there to be able to get that kind of blown up in the backfield. But as you saw, took kind of a weird angle, wasn't able to dive and be able to get that tackle down. So now you're looking at red zone opportunities for the Kansas City Chiefs. And they are committed to the run and committed to this play. And another go. juke takes him down about to the two-yard line. 
Got an eight yards per rush right here for Isaiah Pacheco. Writing is on the wall. I think we all know to do here. There's a handoff right to Pacheco. Got Noah Gray standing right in front of him. No, excuse me. Excuse me, Noah Gray, the tall tight end. The guy who does not get as much love because a man named Travis Kelsey's on his team. Noah <laughs> Gray right there running it up in for six. And you can see that we do have a little bit of update for this matchup so we can make sure everybody knows what's going on. So we do have Cheviot Nick on Kansas City, seven mm -hmm. points on the board, and Elijah Freeman on Baltimore. And as we saw in this first drive, one big play to Travis Kelsey really set that up. And then there was the, the same kind of sweep play uh, on the run game, both of which should have been able to get stopped were not went for really, really long gains. Yeah, so uh, kind of setting up a longer receiving play there is Chevy Nick and the Kansas City Chiefs pretty much after that is just Isaiah Pacheco, Isaiah Pacheco, and then kind of a fake to Isaiah Pacheco. Noah Gray runs the rock right in for Right in for six. Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens starting out. They're our first offensive drive. J.K. Dobbins gets out. Little pitch play right at the outside. 13 yards and a solid little start for the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, 13 yard gain on a screen pass or a bubble screen pass is very, very good. Especially when you're looking in the backfield, you see two running backs. Uh, this, Oh my Lord, just how open is this man? Uh, he had two options. He, <laughs> he could have went to the right mm. or left with that. Decided to take that one over to the right. Only going to gain four yards there, but that is going to be something he was going to go back to because his running back was essentially just opened a lemonade stand back there and had nobody <laughs> anywhere close to him. Started selling them for a quarter if you get thirsty. Oh, oh, nice catch. That's intercepted. Watson right across the middle. That's good. It's called a fumble. I think that's more like an interception pitch right there. And that's another six. Chevy on Nick starting this one out with a bang. It is pretty ruthless when you oh, are so far in the handle. backfield oh. that you can oh pick off or essentially pick off a yeah. lateral attempt. And that's exactly what happened. It is 14 to zero now for Kansas City. Now, we did see a couple of possession leads last week get blown. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to write off Baltimore yet, but they definitely want to make sure that they score here or they don't want to turn the ball over again. And that's just pretty unfortunate. I hear you. I hear you. A, a well phrased defense there gets right in the right place, the right time, puts points on the board because of it here. Jackson back in the gun. Ooh. Easy. Oh, almost. And that's the same player, number 35. That's Watson right there. Almost gets a second. And there was space ahead of him there, Rob. Yeah, you know, before we started the show, I was talking about how there really wasn't much defense last week, but Kansas City has taken that offensively, and I was not familiar <laughs> with your game. Excuse me, Nick, uh, Cheviot Nick, because it is now third and eight, up 14. First quarter is coming to an end shortly, uh, but Baltimore is now afraid to run that, uh, what they were running when they start this game with this two running back mm -hmm. backfield. They've gone away from that, and now... Oh, another, oh my goodness. I thought that was going to be another interception. Huh. Pretty much every time they put the ball in the air, the Kansas City Chiefs are putting a hand on it. Hey, we mentioned it. Lamar Jackson has not attempted a rush really yet, especially not with something with solid blocking ahead of him. Mark Andrews now put into motion here. Audibles upon audibles as Jackson steps back yet again and runs right up the middle. Uh, yes, there's a fantastic defense. Yes, there's was a huge mistake for Kansas City. Uh, you can't assume that he's going to try and run on fourth and eight. But when you open up the field like that across the middle, 28 yards, you're going to be happy it's only 28. Well, and you have to remember that Cook is being controlled uh, by the user here, and he went way back into coverage to be able to guard that. Um, and because of that, there was no spy. There was literally, the empty, as you saw, middle of the field was completely empty. Jackson taking advantage. Going well, the linebacker can always be a little bit difficult as far as placement. Cook runs to the back, and J.K. Dobbins out to the left flat almost. Going to be getting, what, about 13, 14 or no, about 10 yards, excuse me, in that previous one. Short methodical drives. Baltimore and Elijah Freeman seem like they have learned the lesson they want to come up, use against this Kansas City defense all the way back. Big bomb situation. Oof. And Bateman's going to bring that one down. Yes, he's got a touchdown right now. And it's you can see that what Kansas City has decided to do is they start with Cook. They're in this 4-3, it appears. Uh, and they're just trying to get Lamar Jackson to make a mistake. And even then, you could see that the defensive back was just trying to post up a little bit to try to get a jump on that ball and get the interception. Uh, fortunately, that jump didn't happen, and it turned into a touchdown. But it is 14-7 to now, and Baltimore is not out of this. They're one turnover away from getting this game tied up. 
Mm, connection has been lost right here. Perhaps a decision, perhaps just a error or whatnot. We'll bring it on back here in just a couple of seconds uh, and get this one figured on out. Of course, that was 14-7 to with an offensive and defensive touchdown from Cheviot Nick controlling the Kansas City Chiefs right here. Uh, I think that was a fantastic answer. I, th I think that was a fantastic answer. If that was a forfeit, I'd be very, very surprised because you literally just get seven. Now you're going with kickoff plays here. Yeah, I think you have to imagine that if you're Baltimore, you know, you come out, you give up a defense or give up an offensive touchdown. All right, fine. No, no big deal. But being able to have your lateral get picked off in the way that it is really had to rethink what he was doing on offense. And you saw when he opened up his offense, it was two running backs in the backfield. They were going to be able to hopefully do some of these option plays, things like that. And when your option gets blown up like that, just totally abandon that two running back setup. But with a banding in it, you dip, did see a little bit more dink and dunk, be able to get what take what the defense gives you and score the touchdown. So there were a couple of times where Kansas City did get their hands on the ball. So we're going to have to be very aware uh, as we move forward if some of these underneath routes that he's trying to throw that the Kansas City can jump in front of it. Because again, really, if he jumps in front of one more and they can get this again to be a three possession game right now, it's only one. Um, but Kansas City is on offense. If they can get another turnover, turn it into a touchdown, usually you get over two possessions in a Madden game. You just don't have enough time to come back. Yeah, uh, but and, and the good news is this is all happening in the first quarter, of course, right? right? I think think we were getting toward, down to the last couple of plays of the first quarter. And, uh, I mean, it's been said before, whatever's happening, you know, in the first half, whatever the score difference is, within reason, of course, <laughs> can usually be undone in the second half, especially if it's only a one-score difference. So, again, we'd be very surprised if that was a well, it was an intentional thing. Madden server is gonna gonna Madden server, right? Right, and so for everybody at home, in case you didn't know, we are paying, playing five minute quarters. So it is very possible, as you saw with Kansas City when they were holding the ball, they were committed to the run game. This wasn't just uh, throwing the ball deep downfield. Obviously they had Travis Kelsey completely wide open on the busted coverage, um, but there was a lot of Pacheco that you saw there. And I think what Kansas City would like to do is to be able to possess this ball for longer, take possessions away from Jackson and the Ravens and be able to win it that way. And right now they did receive. So the big thing now is to make sure that they are the last team to score uh, so that, again, they don't want the Ravens to go down, score, get the ball back, score again. Um, literally, it is the worst thing that could happen. Yeah. Uh, just maintaining and kind of like trying to put a, some kind of trapper onto the Baltimore Ravens. And so far, given that what uh, Lamar Jackson had the one real good running opportunity, turned it into 28 just like that, right before your eyes. Just alchemy, bam. Nothing into something. Straw and a gold, whatever you call it here, Rob. That's exactly what happened right there. Outside of outside of that, it seemed to have been shutting down the running game mostly. I don't think we've really seen like a solid running attempt as well outside of the you know the option play that obviously went disastrous for Baltimore. Uh, they're incorporated from Ravens thus far. Incorporating you know your your Justice Hill your Justice Hills and whatnot uh, is going to be a question. Which leads me to my next point. Uh, Devonta and I would talk so, so much about how, like, yes, it's nice to try and take the option uh, of running this out on kickoffs, but frequently and so far, we have not seen, uh, like, a real gain uh, achieved from bringing this one out. We've had, like, 18, 23. I think one time it got out to the 27 right here. That's only two yards, and, of course, this is Madden, so, you know, injuries obviously dealt with a little bit differently. But is it really worth it, Rob? This is my question posed to you, sir. Yeah, I think the answer is no. Um, unless you have to run it out. And even then, you don't ever really have to run it out under the new rules. Um, you can fair catch the ball. You can do yes, a lot exactly. of different things uh, now in the kickoff. And in real life, the reason for that is because there's just a lot of injuries on kickoffs and things like that. And obvious, it is uh, an exciting play and so on and so forth. But there are so few kick returns, even under the old rules uh, before they got changed. So under the new rules, it's better do your a fair catch, get it to the 25, just go about your day. Don't let your opponent hit stick you out of the game um, because essentially that's all they're going to do. They're going to just try to tee you up and get that ball back. I mean, it's just infrequent. Uh, you're going to have two guys running at each other at that uh, speed and whatnot in the uh, professional football league. But, Rob, if you hear that, that is Novantis screaming, just mauling all the way from Australia right now. That's why he wasn't able to join us here. He's down there performing and whatnot. Absolutely love it. But his his, his point was the opposite of ours. He always wanted about. He always wanted this kick sixes. He always wanted action. Now, towards the end of the game, if you're down and whatnot, I, I'm going to I'm going to 
more like fully understand the stance of hey we're down by a score this is essentially another play right this is another opportunity to score especially when there's only so much time left outside of that sorry Devonta. sorry yeah, uh, I mean, it has even, been figured out here on the desk <laughs> even then i it's still really loose uh because the chances of score I, I i would probably say there's just as many fumbles on a kickoff as there are you know touchdowns uh when it actually probably probably more fumbles than there are touchdowns uh when it comes to kickoffs so i just don't have any faith in that uh so again you'll find that most madden players at the end of a game will you know like, oh let me take it out and see if i can get you know some extra yards to be up but i normally think that the time that it takes to t that comes off the clock from doing that you know versus how much time or how many extra yards you're going to be able to get it just mathematically doesn't make a lot of sense uh so i'm sure that there's some numbers if we could crunch you know ten thousand games of madden to be able to say like <laughs> yeah. hey how much time does it take off versus like your expected win rate on yards we could easily come up with some of that stuff but i just talk that stuff i don't actually do any math you know math <laughs> is for smart kids i, I try to just exactly. play video games Exactly. We will not be doing caster math for you guys here <laughs> on the day. Two two points coming at you. First of all, uh, was, it was not a voluntary leap. It was not a forfeit or whatever else like that. Madden server just dropped. They are recreating the scoreline and recreating the time. It'll be 14-7 when we come on back with Chiefs having possession. Second point for you. Uh, this is something Devonta and I talked about a lot as well. Are you a spring football guy? A little, little XFL, USFL, now the UFL. No spring football whatsoever. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I just, I understand what they're trying to do with spring football, and I get the XFL and, and the Rock and these people, you know, doing this whole thing. But generally, and I'm 43 years old, I've seen a lot of football in my life. I've seen summer and, you know, spring league, all kinds of different things. And the problem is that, Madden and NFL fans are fans of their teams. Um, there's a reason that they have a hard time trying to fill stadiums and things like that uh, for spring because spring is baseball. Uh, we're talking about making sure that we can get on. As a Philadelphia fan, once NFL is over, it's Phillies time. Time to get ready for that. And then we're going to have playoff basketball. And I don't think that spring football can ever compete with the NBA or MLB uh, or hockey, any of those three things. So, you know, uh, starting a league that already is going to be in fourth mm, doesn't really do it for me. But to be fair, minor league sports are very popular in certain parts of the country. So just because it's not for me doesn't mean that somebody else out there might not love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Navanta and I are, are pretty diehard fans of most of the string football. And uh, especially given that they have taken a stance where they're not trying to like directly compete with the mm -hmm. NFL. In fact, when players get signed to NFL teams, the teams will usually tweet out like, hey, mm -hmm. congratulations to player XYZ for, for coming on, doing great things in our league and now getting on making the big bucks, even if it's I mean, even if it's practice squad uh, in the NFL, the, the, you know, the pay doesn't exactly line up. <laughs> that, that said, that said, this year they have. Uh, what? So they merged the XFL, the USFL, now the UFL. They took the top four teams from either league and then combined them to make an eight-league team, uh, eight leagues or eight teams from from each league beforehand. Um, and given that most of the teams are in the South, in Texas, I think that they have like good target markets. And the St. Louis game specifically will fill all the way up. But we did not bring you guys out here to uh, to, to talk about spring <laughs> football. Just personally, so, something I love, and I'm looking forward to it. Given that some football is better than no football, and I it like. Dog, middle 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 of the summer baseball man. I I, I cannot do regular season baseball. Yeah, well, just watch and you're it. A Carolina in, in fan. person, amazing. In person, amazing. Uh, watching watching dog days of summer baseball on TV is, is like punishment. I I I totally get it. And like I said, when the NFL season's running, you have to deal with Carolina, and that's barely spring football too. So I get it. Like it makes sense. Um, <laughs> brutal. The rest brutal. of us. <laughs> you know, who get to experience playoff football, even if we lose. Um, it, it's a little bit different. And again, this is where Madden is so important, is that once the regular season is over, we can jump on the sticks, get into tournaments, be able to play our favorite teams, um, be able to play leagues, all kinds of different things. Um, play Mutt, which is, you know, Madden Ultimate Team, so that you can still play Carolina, but actually have good players on your team. Um, so all of those things are there. So um, I definitely think that spring football has a, a place uh i think that I, madden's probably more popular than spring football though <laughs> oh 100 percent. yeah again and i think they have relegated themselves to like a secondary position within i do like that any cfl any canadian football 
Canadian oh, so I, fans. It's funny. There I actually like go. arena football uh, ah, a lot okay. better than both of those football leagues, mostly because it's so different. You know, having 50 yards and like being able to check people into the boards and knock them out of the stadium, essentially. So like all those <laughs> things are pretty fun. Um, and the scores are just astronomical, obviously, you know, like 85 to 60 and dumb stuff like that. So it's, it's interesting. Um, but I think for the most part, I really just kind of focus in on what's going on in the NFL. And right now, it, we're talking about the the combine. Uh, we've seen a lot of things. We and teams are going to change next year. Obviously, if you're the Bears, uh, you're. I can't. I still can't imagine a world where they don't take Caleb Williams. Um, and I know that a lot of people who are Chicago fans feel like that's kind of unfair to Justin Fields and so on and so forth. But it's really just a money thing. Being able to have Caleb Williams under contract for you know, a couple extra years, you know, on a rookie contract, as opposed to having to pay Justin Fields 30, 40, 50 million, who knows yeah. what kind of money that man's <laughs> going to require. And even if the, the salary cap is going up to, I think, 260 million or some crazy number now, yeah. it's better to spend that on skill players and have your quarterback be really cheap, a la Mr. Brock Purdy, Mr. Re Mr. Irrelevant, making like, you know, 800,000. So then now you can pay like seven different people, 26 million plus a year. So, yeah. Yeah. I did. Brock Purdy is an anomaly. When, when you look at like stats numbers and like what came, the San Francisco 49ers have been able to do with him and whatnot, it is truly, truly an anomaly. I, I think we should all ascribe to be the Brock <laughs> Purdy's of our respective like uh, situations or businesses or whatnot. Anyway, Justice Hill. Hey, the players paying attention to us, Rob. Paying attention to us. No more uh, kick return attempts. Yeah. Um, only thing is I pretty sure Kansas City's supposed to have the ball, right? I do believe that is the case. Ah, here we go. I believe that's, that's why. The case. They're punting. Here comes the... Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, also a boatload more time in this uh, in this quarter, but we make do with what we got here, Rob. Make do with what we got. Cook, trying to get away from one, does not happen. Makes him one with the dirt. That's number 23. All right. So now we're going to see if Kansas City is going to commit to this long-term plan of being able to run the football. Uh, we did see a couple of sweeps to the left, and you do see, again, Pacheco number 10 on the right side. So that is still there and available. And I, I think they just want to be able to take advantage of this linebacker matchup. You see they're playing 3-4, and they go right back to an excellent block on the edge, and Pacheco's <laughs> going to get nine yards to start. Yeah, so second and inches coming up here. This is another another uh, another awesome question I always have. Would you rather situation like this get like well, let's say a little bit closer to the uh, to the end zone? Are you going first and ten, or excuse me, a new set of downs first and ten? Or do you prefer the inches? Do you prefer do you prefer like having it right there and having a couple of options on yeah. second down and more? Of course. Uh, to get a first down, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's what's Yeah, I mean, this just gives you opportunities to be able to, you get a couple of free plays as long as you don't get any negative plays. And right now you can see they're, they actually have a fullback in, and the fullback's going to get blown up. So maybe not quite as opportune because they were not able to convert. And it looks like it's possible this could be a punt. And I have hmm. yet to see a real punt. <laughs> Yeah, he said he said the words of curse over here. Punting and Madden, especially no, in the sir. first quarter, not going to happen today. Fake right there. Noah Gray oh. was taken out of the back earlier. Now the tight end busts off a big one to the right side for, what is that, probably 30 yards or so? Way more than they needed for the first down. Yeah, definitely feels bad uh, to be able to stop a team on inches multiple times in a row only to give it up like that and then right up the middle oh. pacheco just the i mean gosh i don't even know how to explain how you could be that open in the middle of the field on with running lanes hmm. the offensive line right here just literally splits the difference pushes right side right left side left and you have probably eight ten feet of open area right there right back to pacheco why would you do anything else yeah and, and this you know essentially like sweep left play or has been working just wonders every single time. They're not even bothering to flip the play at all. Um, they're just able to get a really good seal uh, on that left side. So as long as that play is there, that is definitely going to hold that linebacker uh, to doing some things they don't normally want to do. And this is a bad pass. Okay, yeah, threw it way, away. Way outside, way, way over right there. A uh, little bit less sauce on that one. Might have been able to fall down, but it was still falling into double coverage. Regardless incomplete pass. Mahomes back in the shotgun with 
I have them right up front. Now plenty of room. That's a free first down. Like it fell from the sky from a cloud. Yeah, and you can see the difference between, I guess, the threat of Mahomes running because when Lamar Jackson had essentially the same thing, it turned into like a 30-something yard gain, whereas Mahomes is like, okay, I got the first down. We got to get down, and here's that. Oh, my goodness. This time, instead oh. of taking it all the way left, brings it back inside and immediately scores a touchdown. So now this is where we talk about how important it is to be able, as the Ravens, to continue to keep this game close because right now they're down 14. They've got 40 seconds. Your average offensive drive is going to take up so far what we've seen from the Ravens, since they're not running too much, about mm -hmm. two minutes. So they're going to get the poss possibly could get the ball back twice here. Um, but if they get the ball once and they don't score, it is going to be mm. a bad time for everybody. Okay, so look decent right there as Elijah Freeman moves the man over to the left side. Looks like it might have been opened up a little bit, maybe getting to a little bit closer to the out-of-bounds line. Sending it right up the seam. Not going to happen. Starting this one off at the 23, as you mentioned, Rob, Elijah Freeman and the Baltimore Ravens got to find something on this drive. Got to do it relatively quick. Speaking of running plays, Lamar Jackson, this is the difference. Oh, user strip fumble, I yeah. do believe. Yeah, I believe the Ravens recovered. They did, and the, this drive will continue. But this is the difference in having a running quarterback like Lamar Jackson and a quarterback who runs in Patrick Mahomes. And this is at one-on-one. -on -one. Ooh, a little bit high, but there's still a little bit of gun shy going on because every time Lamar had been putting the ball in the air previously, even when it was one-on-one -on -one coverage, it felt like the Kansas City defender was able to get a hand on it. And even there, it was a little bit off. And so if you're the Ravens, you still have to be a little weary of putting that ball in the air. It was a couple inches back, and that is a big... Big gain. Speaking of, Zay Flowers going to be able to bring this one down. Big one right there, about 16 yards as the end of our first quarter. Post, uh, you know, reconnect and everything else like that. Coming into the second quarter in a minute. Yeah, and 21 points is a lot in one quarter. So it, we've got five minutes now. I would assume when you're starting at the 50-yard line, this shouldn't take more than a minute-ish if you are able to score. They're going to go quick screen to the right. And it does get bottled up, but not until he gets about 12 yards. That's it done. Moving the chains right here. Like you said, got to make those guys work, not let them sit on the rest on their laurels for any amount of time here. Make the chain guys work. Up and down, up and down. Love it. Laura Jackson back in the gun once again. Takes several steps back. Pretty much open across the middle, and the writing is on the wall <laughs> here for Lamar Jackson. The Baltimore Ravens is now pushing to the corner here. Get back oh! to about the five. Easy juke to the left side, and that's another six. Rob, you were talking about how the Ravens can get it done. How about that one? Uh, this is why you play the Ravens, because Lamar Jackson is such an un... It's just an irresponsible threat uh, <laughs> that when you're playing the linebacker normally in Madden, like you like to be able to roam, you like to be able to double cover who you see open. Uh, but if you're not basically playing a spy, then even and the problem is even when you are spying, it doesn't even help that much because you could saw in that last play, the linebacker immediately recognized that Jackson was going to be on the run and then just got shaken completely out of his cleats and well so did the rest of the team so i guess it, it was all fair there but that's a that's an excellent defensive play and an excellent tackle in the middle of the field yeah right across the middle recognize this one pacheco has carried this rock a whole lot so far now breaking this one up for only a two yard run uh gotta agree with you though man it, it is so hard to play against a quarterback like Mar Jackson back to a man named Isaiah Pacheco as he shimmy shakes around one gets out for a much longer run afterwards. It's the NFL, so you gotta you gotta celebrate afterwards, even if it's just a twelve yard run, right? Yeah, um, that is what you do. But this is, I'm just very impressed oh. that Kansas City with the the weapons that they do have are not getting Travis Kelsey more involved when. It's just been the Pacheco show. So, I mean, that's great. You're winning. Do what you got to do. But I imagine that Travis Kelsey will show up eventually in the offense. No other receivers. Mention as well, no Rice, no Marcus Scantling. Speaking of McCole Hartman Jr., perfect accuracy does bring this one in as well. That's going to be moving the chains. Again, make these chains guys earn their day's wages. And Kansas City is deciding to slow this down a little bit, try to leave less than two minutes on the clock. 
oh, this is a, you know, went to the well a little bit too much that time, and uh, the Ravens were able to sniff that one out. So an average of 10-plus gets cut down to a little bit less than 9 now here for Pacheco on 8 attempts. Second and 14 now. Got to air it out here. I'm assuming now getting Ooh. a lot of attention right there. That's, that's gonna... definitely going to be intentional yeah. grounding. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't know why that's intentional grounding, the, the reason, he did throw it out of bounds. He did throw it towards a receiver, but he was still in the pocket. So mm -hmm. a casual third and 27. Casual. And so he's been here before. Now getting caught up and de oh, that's brutal. <laughs> that's brutal. They, they ate like you know the computer defender or the offensive lineman right there just kind of sits, stares, admires the grass for a couple of seconds, and you get no kind of help in that situation. Three point attempt coming in up should be down, and it is. That's three more points here for Kansas City. Yeah, and that's a great, great defensive stand uh for Baltimore because Again, Kansas City hadn't been stopped. They were able to really put some nice pressure in uh, to Patrick Mahomes' face and turn that into a set. Look, in these games where nobody ever gets any kind of defense, mm. being able to get them and stop them to a field goal is excellent. And as soon as we talk about how people aren't really doing much in the kick return game, they are at 34. Yeah, nine extra yards right here from where they'd take it from the fair catch. And this was like... Yeah, pretty middle of the end zone as well. Solid little return here and right up the middle as well. Pass out, Mark Andrews. That's going to be a dropped ball right there. Looked like it hit him right in the hands. Not going to happen here for the Baltimore Ravens. Second and 10 coming up. And here we go. Now, that is a nice play. We've seen such good stick skills from the Ravens that when they have anybody in the open field, you can almost guarantee they're not going to get 1v1 tackled. So being able to get your man out in space like that is guaranteed 14, 15 yards almost every time. Going to happen again here. Three out to the left side. They're now crisscrossing this field. It's a big bomb to Mark Andrews. And Ooh. again, two drops him right in the hands right there. Single coverage. I, I don't even think defender really had that much to do influence wise, interference wise uh, with, with the with the pass of that ball. That's just a straight up drop twice. Yeah. And this is a, a looks like a little bit different Ravens team. Um the threat of Lamar Jackson has definitely opened up some more of these running lanes. Uh, you can see Bolton is definitely not as aggressive about trying to just immediately go up the field to try to double team somebody, trying to stay home a little bit. So it's making it a little bit easier for the Ravens to do and activate, get their, or get their offense activated. And they really haven't been stopped since. So, you know, this threat of Lamar Jackson is doing wonders. That's Andrews sent out to the right side here. Last couple of seconds. They're going to eat up a lot of this clock. Justice Hill now running the rock right up the middle. This is timeout territory, and it is here with 20 seconds left in the second quarter. Well, the, the worst thing that can happen for Kansas City is to give up a touchdown here because th if they give up a touchdown here, they are going to be uh, – Oh, look at that blitz. Ooh, Did not see my. the player at all. And the one thing you can't do with 16 seconds on the clock is take a big sack. And that's exactly what happened. And one timeout left here for the Ravens as well. Possibly two plays. And one of those got to ask the question if three points will be attempted if this does not get up. But Justice Hill gets up. Oh, he gets to the just... first. He gets to the corner. That's two of them diving Superman plays. No Lois Lane here on the day as the Baltimore Ravens put up another six points. Just atrocious tackling. Um, That's fair. Had the angle multiple times and just couldn't put a helmet on him. And now the worst thing that can happen has happened where there's nine seconds on the clock. You don't have enough time to score and you do have to kick it off. So we are going to see if Kansas City can play defense again, get another turnover, because remember, they did end up getting a pick six earlier in this game, and they are now only up three. James right up the middle, takes off a couple of seconds of the precious time here just to get to the 25. This is exactly what we were talking about, about not having uh, expected value. But still trying to... Go for that one. Seven seconds to go right here. Back in the pocket. Without his scantling. 
up a couple strides to the outsides as audibles are called. There's really only one thing on the day. That's up, oh, that's oh, in, that's Yasin, oh, and that's a pick. Not going to be enough. Maybe if he dropped down immediately. Actually, that would definitely would have been the play. Drop down immediately yeah. and then go for the three points for the half ends, right? Yep. Uh, but it's easy to get excited uh, when True. you get your first True. turnover of the game. And But now, this game, which we talked about, just because you're up 14, doesn't really mean anything. Um, you know, you are now, it is a three-point game, and we are going to see Kansas. Oh, okay. So Kansas City is, I th for some reason, I thought that it was the other way around, that Kansas City was going to be kicking. But oh, is, yeah, so, so because of the reset, right? Maybe that is what happened. I believe so. We might see another kickoff here uh, to make this right between the two. Okay. I think that's the punt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yep. All will right, be right with the world in just a second, folks. A couple of seconds burned off, and that was all of that. I wonder if he'll try and return this, though, given that they would still kind of have the same opportunity. Okay. Hey, good sportsmanship right here. Good sportsmanship. You saw the, 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 the user dive there on the 25. Love yeah. that. And uh, excellent. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. And we appreciate them being able to make sure that the game is, you know, doing what it's supposed to be doing. And yes. now you see the Ravens with the ball trying to take their first lead of the game. Jackson steps back. He got pancaked earlier across the body. This is a big one right oh. into the hands of Zay Flowers and another little juke around. What was that about the Baltimore Ravens taking the lead there, Rob? We said it. It's just. <laughs> One on one, you're just not tackling Elijah. You're just not like it doesn't matter what's going on. You got to get the pick because oh Ooh. my goodness, or just catch the kick. <laughs> okay, okay. So a little bit of a uh, rest for the weary, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel is that's only six points put up by the Baltimore Ravens on their second play of the second half, third play of the second half. Yeah, being able to be up four, being up three is. Very, 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 very different, as everyone knows. Um, but Kansas City, again, they can also take the lead back, but this is a far, far cry from them being up 14-0 after picking off Lamar Jackson for the touchdown. Yeah, it was Yasin at the last couple of seconds right there. Oh, are you talking about the first? Yeah, sorry. So that was, yep. that was the very first one. That was the option play. Yeah, that was... Seems like uh, seems like forever ago. Now that we're <laughs> what totaling about fifty one points, well, not not about fifty one points. Even I can do that math. Fifty one points exactly here. Just starting the third period oh! as well. Another one, Hamilton. It's not just a play, folks. It's a player as he takes another one, and Baltimore rips the possession back. What twenty six yards out. It doesn't seem like the same Kansas City offense. I mean, in their essentially their last two plays have both been interceptions. So Lamar Jackson looks like the, the complete package right now after having that turnover early has really just been a completely unstoppable force. And the defense is continues to get him the ball again. Complete package. Order it uh, order on Amazon or whatever, because Lamar Jackson really can do it all. Toss out right here to avoid the sack. Third and three coming up. Uh, the way that these players have been playing, I feel like Elijah Freeman does go for the three points, especially if this get yields in a negative yardage play. Toss yeah. out, no catch. Now fourth and three. I don't think so. I think he's going to go for it. I don't imagine, you know. Oh, look, I am incorrect. I was definitely, and Kansas City was definitely thinking um, that this was going to not be a field goal attempt, uh, mostly because the way Kansas City's offense has been playing uh, it would make sense to go for it mm. because your conversion rate should be pretty high with three yards. But here we are, six-point game after being up 14-0. Kansas City has only scored 10, and Baltimore has scored a 30. Big one right there. Big one tries to bring it out to the 18. No gain really there. Put the knee down for 25. Um, I, I, just, I guess I feel like the math, if they're ahead by four, then it's like, okay, this is comfortable. Even if they get a kickoff, three points in for us, then it's, uh, you know, we still have that point of a lead. But taking six right here, forcing, you know, two field goals or the touchdown, no extra points, something like this. I feel like the math might add up there. And that really is almost a philosophical question, though. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's pretty easy to, and this is why you see this in the NFL a lot more, is 
your chance of converting a three yard play uh, is much higher um, than the, like the, the positives that you get out of it is much yeah. higher is what I was trying to say is because ultimately not only are you going to run clock, but you would have a touchdown instead of the field goal. So an extra four points. So now, you know, you're up 10 uh, and being up 10 versus being up six is light years in a different direction. Um, so that's normally why you see in the NFL nowadays, that's why the play sheet says to not kick it. And the but look at these tackles, the though. Yeah. Issues with tackling earlier that some of these defense have had. Well, at least if you're named the Baltimore Ravens, that period is over. The movie's finished. They get done. 24 to 30 right now. Second and seven for Patrick Mahomes, the Kansas City Chiefs. He drops back, now runs way right across the body. Kelsey just puts the hand out and then stops. Oh, absolutely love that one. Yeah, and you have to have Travis Kelsey be involved. Um, there's, I, I just don't imagine a Kansas City offense that doesn't see a lot of Pacheco and a lot of Kelsey. So you just mm -hmm. keep running with that. And like you said, if if they have to pull the defender out to guard what Kelsey's doing, that just makes it that much easier for Pacheco to do his thing. And you want him to not be able just to key on one of those players. And now they are. Okay, there you go. Just literally eyes on Isaiah Pacheco right there. Just wait for him to do what he does. Simple stuff. Second and twelve. Also two on the previous right here. Looks like Pacheco might be involved as a receiver coming up and is going to have somebody on him, though, as the coverage here is pretty tight. Tosses this one out. Holmes goes for another attempt here. Third and 12 now coming up, Rob. Yeah, third and 12 is it's OK. Uh, there's a lot of plays in your playbook uh, that can go for 12 and you still have a lot of space. So um, Kansas, I mean, for Kansas City, this is. Obviously, two down territory. I don't imagine, again, that they would want to kick a field goal here because that doesn't help when there's only about five minutes and 50 seconds left in the game. Um, and Ooh. it does end up getting swatted away. So here we go. Do they go for it? Are they going to kick this field goal? Because, again, if you're kicking is... the field goal here, it's, like, completely wild to me. Um, mostly because mm. the Ravens have shown that they can hold the ball for, like, four minutes. So if you... Don't play defense here. The your game is over. <laughs> yeah, and if they get a touchdown, make this two scores. The problem, they right. will have a it, possession afterwards. The onside like it, yeah, onside kick just doesn't you know, just doesn't happen anymore, really. And it's it, funny it you is, said it that we saw last two, gasp. We saw two onside kicks recovered last week. Whoa. Okay. Speaking of Justice Hill, rocketing back. No kickoff returns. No kick sixes. Justice Hill Look has another that. story for you. And proving us absolutely wrong here because <laughs> if you're again if your math is that you're getting way more touchdowns on kickoffs than you ever are getting fumbles then it makes a whole lot of sense to take it out and has immediately makes it a 10 point game and it's actually kind of rough uh for the ravens because they would have loved to be able to run out a lot of this clock um, but it is mm -hmm. a two possession game and now kansas city which has been doing a lot of running in order to be able to get yardage uh is going to have to get you know two scores and then somewhere in between there try to get the ball back so they got to get yep. 10 straight just to tie there's been plenty of turnovers here on the day trust in the defense as kansas city put some points on the board is going to be required if they're going to take out the w the first of He's at least two best of three matches. Fortson wide, wide open. Lemonade stand. He could have built a whole compound right mm -hmm. there with nobody near him. Six for 12 on 185 yards, a touch and two interceptions there for Patrick Mahomes. To be fair, one of them didn't matter as much as it was the last play of the second, uh, second quarter right there. But fourth quarter we go up by 10 here of the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, and look at these, you know, Second and third quarter outscored 30 to six. That's crazy. That is crazy. Come back right now. The Baltimore Ravens here as Pacheco gets the rock yet again, pushes it to the outside and going to be getting 13 or 14 yards for that effort. Yeah. And that play has been there all day for them. Still have yet to possibly flip that over. And that could just be, a function of who they have uh, at the very end of their line. Um, but so far, I, I just, I'm still kind of concerned that in order to be able to move this ball, they are going to have to run it. That's going to take time. 
And the Ravens have shown that not only can they run it, but man, even their special teams has been able to get some scoring on the board. Mm-hmm. Right to the corner. No, but home's going to hold on to this one. Get up to about the four. Now the three yard line right here. Love that. Love that. Uh, again, uh, I, your your difference between a running quarterback versus a quarterback who runs fair, but Patrick Mahomes sets his sights on the corner right there. Speaking of running, but Checo gets nowhere. He lost of one on that one. Yeah, and it's now Kansas City versus the clock. Uh, how much time are they going to burn off here? And it does get a little bit more difficult as you get into... Oh, my! What an Almost. excellent tackle to be able to keep, make them have to go again run more clock uh, because this is going to give the Ravens the opportunity to get this ball Ooh. and essentially hold it for the rest of the game. Yeah, so that is a touchdown. That is good. But uh, the math earlier that Rob and I were talking about with the option to go for the three points instead of trying to go for it, go for uh, some kind of offensive aggressive play when you're talking about putting points on the board. Now that really is coming to play for a team that already held the ball. As Rob said, what, you said four and a half minutes almost between – Two quarters, rough stuff, rough stuff. Justice Hill just had the kick six in the previous play. Now gets right out to the outside. Got to get around two of them. Can't get around the second right there. But 10 extra yards will be the reward for the effort. Well, and the Ravens have shown that their special teams unit is worthy of taking the ball out of the end zone uh, multiple, multiple times. But I want to see how dedicated they are to running this football or to just being able to pass. And that's essentially a pass, but... Oh, oh just God. just absolutely dominating uh, when it comes to just how flexible he's able to get these guys to move or be and just real smooth on the sticks uh, for the Ravens. Really has been. Zay Flowers has gotten involved as a receiver like nobody on Kansas City has stay so in far. Bounds. There you go. Yep. No, yeah, absolutely stay in bounds. Like three timeouts. Yeah, that sucks. Two minute warning. Yeah, that sucks. But Mar Jackson, the Ravens. This is just run the ball type situation. Maybe short passes to the inside to keep this clock a running. Yeah, I mean scoring isn't the worst thing you can do here for the Ravens. Um, just because onside kicks are so few and far between. I mean, that being said, last week we saw two onside kicks mm-hmm. get recovered. Uh, but mm-hmm. those are like the last two onside kicks I've seen like in I don't know five years. <laughs> so um, under normal circumstances, onside kicks are definitely not something you're going to see a lot of. Um, but for the Ravens now, it's let's get this down to the two-minute warning uh, and see what we can do from there. But they're in, they're just actually moving it. I just don't understand why you would snap it before two minutes, but that's me. And that's a pick, and and that's a lot of greed ahead. Willie Sneed right here, Rob. Just absolutely greedy. Just greedy for no reason. Like, I just, I'm, I am astonished at the decision making here when you are way up you're about to score and you're throwing the football for some god awful reason and now a game that you have in hand now you're back at it now you have to score you've got 155 no mistakes even though this is the second time that we have had essentially a pick six uh and the ravens are on the ropes again Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Uh, choked lead. I, we might sound critical. Well, that's because that's what we're exactly what we're doing right now, folks. Elijah Freeman had this one wrapped up in a bag, had a bow on top, ready to open it up on the morning, December 25th. Threw this one away. This is now, okay, that, that is really, really freaking good, but this is still not a situation Elijah Freeman ever had to witness, ever had to experience whatsoever. Well, and, but ball, good for him right to, to, yeah, but good for him to be able to get that long play in, so now you've got a minute 23. This is I, you would much rather just be able to kick a field goal and win, but you've got about a minute left. You've got three timeouts. The entire field is your oyster. Uh, you just can't make any mistakes right now. Aguilar oh, and what a, there's a pick. Like, that, I don't mean a pick as an interception, but a pick as yeah. in, like, the defensive the players <laughs> essentially hit each other so that the offensive player could kind of sneak through there and be able to get this done. So now the Ravens would love to be able to just get this to like the one yard line and like score with essentially no time, but we're going to see. Yeah. You got to let them score. If you're Kansas city, yeah, just there you get go. This ball back and try and see what they can do on offense. You're hundred percent. Correct. And that's super, super fortunate. Um, 
that the Ravens didn't just like randomly just fall down at the one yard line or something. Um, I know that's kind of difficult in video game football to be able to do, but you've got 58 seconds. You're going to be able to get the ball back as Patrick Mahomes. You feel pretty good here. Now let's see if he takes this out and he doesn't. And see, this is what I was talking about. Like you, if you're the Ravens, just because of how strong your special teams have been going, you may have considered doing that. But I think because what Kansas City has seen over this entire game, uh, the math didn't make sense versus the clock. So they've got 58 Mm -hmm. seconds. They have one timeout left. And they've got some plays, but I don't imagine that you're going to see a lot of running plays from Pacheco. Um, But even still, the defensive you know, uh, abilities on the Ravens were like, oh, hey, guess what? We're Mm. still going to guard Pacheco here on the outside, knowing that that's really not an option for Kansas City. 12-second runoff right there to Jadavion Clowney taking out Mahomes inside as well, which is the most important part of this. Tries to get it out. That's going to be attempted pass incomplete. Clock stoppage, Rob. Yeah, 26 seconds left. Third and seven. We still haven't seen Kelsey be terribly involved this game. And now you're seeing a little bit more of a prevent defense. Um, and the Ravens know that going up the middle is not really an option. Running isn't an option. So it's completely one dimensional offense. And then oh, there no. is your sack and a timeout, fourth and 11, 20 seconds. It is going to be a little difficult for Kansas City, but not impossible. Maybe, out, yeah, out to the uh, bounds. That, that's pretty much everything that you Ooh. need. And that's a pick. This game is over. Hamilton does it twice in a game. Two picks. And he's going all the way to the house for six. Just a little bit of icing on top of this cake. 91, Did... 92 points coming in in just a second, folks. Yeah. A little between these two teams. And it didn't have to be this difficult for Elijah Freeman. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the Ravens are still going to win this game. So congratulations to him, uh, <laughs> and we're going to attempt an onside kick here, um, and that is a recovery. Nope. Went out yeah. of bounds first, looks like. Okay, guy, guy bucking up there with Andy Reid. I'm I not know. sure how Calm well down. that one would go in real life. <laughs> like, Oh, uh, Prevent coming in here. Nope. F- fake handoff. Mahomes going to run to the outside, maybe toss a rock, maybe something. Ten points, or, doesn't matter. Up and down, yeah. another pick does not matter. Get up and run 51, it. 51, there you go. What's going to be your ending score here for the first game between Elijah Freeman and Cheviot Nick? Yeah, and that, that game definitely did not turn out uh, how it started. Uh, so if you tuned in in the middle of the game, uh, Kansas City was up 14 nothing after getting a pick six. Looked like everything was going Kansas City's way. And then there are just a lot of turnovers uh, from Kansas City. And it was very uncharacteristic of what we've been seeing from Kansas City in previous games. Um, but Pacheco was doing excellent. But once that got taken away, um, it definitely started looking like Kansas City was trying to force things, which played right into the Ravens' hands. Ravens just kind of reading that one. And what, there were three defensive touchdowns in this <laughs> game. The first one here from Kansas City, or for Kansas City, I should say. Uh, kind of the interception of that of that pitch play over in the back. And then Ravens come through with not one, but two Oof. in the fourth quarter as well. In, in a sticky situation, they clearly come out on top. A 92 total score game. Jeez, a uh, Folks, if you like scoring, well, yeah. this first game did not fail to entertain. 92 points in a five minute quarter game is a lot. And by a lot, I mean a whole lot. And you have to also remember that because of like the interceptions for touchdowns and things like that, that's where a lot of the scoring went. But the Ravens special teams were being able to take the ball out on kickoffs, doing really good things there. Ended up having a kickoff return. Also amazing. Uh, so I'm really, really excited as to what the Ravens can continue here to do uh, because Lamar Jackson obviously was doing really well um, in in game two. It's going to be hard if you're Kansas City to kind of figure out what it is that you need to do to win this game. You were up 14-0 you mm-hmm. all of a sudden were unable to stop Lamar Jackson. So you have to decide, are you going to spy him and really like be the spy? Or are you going to try to play like this quasi spy where you're going to back up maybe like 
five-ish, six yards, be able to try to guard this in interior with on zone and then come back. But if you do that, you're going to give Lamar Jackson this essentially like this full head of steam. And the Ravens have really just been just absolute just monsters on the sticks, being able to juke and spin and not let one defender take him down. Yeah, I mean, Elijah Freeman has really put on just a clinic on how to avoid defensive tackles. Just mm -hmm. uh, it, it is the shimmy shakes, it's the jukes, it's literally everything so far. And sometimes it's just literally stopping, just letting mm -hmm. guys fly. Like, do, again, do their best Superman impression, just going right past you. But this is just the Lamar Jackson like effect, right? Uh, Lamar Jackson only had, I think, like three or four like big actual runs in this previous game. But the simple fact that you always, always have to account for that, you always have to have somebody playing zone mm -hmm. ahead of him or somebody doing something thing near him because otherwise he's going to bust these off. It's just going to be a first down every single time. Uh, obviously, Patrick Mahomes showed that he was able to do that a couple of times, but that was even more like forced plays. It, it was like the, it was like the D, not the default, it was like the fallback, right? It was like the check down in the form of running the ball, whereas Lamar Jackson is just like, this is always an A1 option. Yeah, and we're ready for game two. Um, again, the Ravens took it down in game one, so this is going to be an elimination game uh, for today's bracket uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. Will they be able to come out strong again, or are we going to see another essential, eventual route uh, by the Ravens? It was uh, I think it was three different lead changes, four lead changes. Kansas City coming up, you know, the, the the Ravens taking it back, Kansas City taking it back, and then the Ravens <laughs> off the back of that kick six, uh, going forth and then finishing this one, then going with the onside kick, a little bit of disrespect added on top of that. Ninety-two points in the first total. I, I have to assume, I have to assume that a lot of these offensive mistakes that yielded defensive points aren't going to happen as much in game two, right, Rob? Uh, that's actually kind of hard to say, uh, mostly because I think obviously that that option play got thrown out of the playbook for the Ravens. And after that, they were doing a pretty good job of taking, you know, care of the ball. Uh, it was really more along the lines that like Kansas City just kind of really put the ball in like some weird places and uh, was able to like these drives just all of a sudden turn into like smoke. But even when they were turning the ball over constantly, they were winning that game at a like after they had already blown their 14 point lead, they came back in that game and still could have won that game. And then the same thing for the Ravens, where the Ravens were essentially going to just ice the game, you know, did something kind of, you know, out of character uh, to get that interception. But so I think if it's me, I'm I'm really putting my money back on the Ravens. I was really happy once they made the adjustments on their offense uh, to be able to keep that linebacker home and opening up passing lanes. Um, it just looked really, really good for the Ravens. So if we take out uh, that one play that went back for the touchdown and look at what they did on special teams and what they did on offense before or after that, everything looked really good for the Ravens. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a ice, ice skating uphill for Kansas City in game two. It's in ice skating uphill is difficult, folks. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, getting confirmed, Chiefs versus Ravens again. No teams uh, change up here as well. Another big difference between these two games, uh, to these two teams. Excuse me, Robin. Game number one is just the wide receivers, right? Uh, yeah, Travis Kelsey was involved in the passing game there for the Kansas City Chiefs. Did Rasheed Rice even get a look? Did Marquez Valdez Scandling, Marcus Valdez Scandling even get like serious looks in this game? Number one. If then you shift your attention on over to the Baltimore Ravens, I think Nelson Aguilar had 160 yards, and that was before the game even finished. That was the last time he took one right there, and that was off of like six receptions. This is absolutely crazy. You cannot neglect your wide receiver core like the Kansas City Chiefs did in the first game and expect to come out on top. Yeah, and even if you do, look, if you're going to ignore your wide receivers, I would love to make sure that you've got Travis Kelsey with like 10 catches. Then it makes sense. But I think Kelsey maybe only had like three catches that game. So, yeah. uh, for Kansas City, we're going to see early and often if this is going to go right back to Pacheco, if we're going to see more of these sweeps uh, because that was really working for them to going to the left or will they start flipping up to the right? Uh, will we see anything different on the offense? And that's going to start right now. See how that one goes. Getting out to it. Why does he decide not to bring this one out? Should be out Nick. Me starting off this game too. They are on uh, match point and they know it. You got to know it. Batch from home's Back in the shotgun. Audible's at least looked at for a second. Pacheco is sent way out. And it's going to be Noah Gray getting involved yet again. The lesser known big tight end here for the Kansas City Chiefs uh, had similar. I mean, yeah, Noah Gray actually had the had, had the tutty in, in game one. Travis Kelsey got involved. Travis Kelsey got some yardage. I don't believe Travis Kelsey caught a rock single time in the first game between these two teams. 
Right. And that play that you just saw uh, from the tight end, they ran that on the other side previously. So they know they've got something there. Uh, I would love to see Travis Kelsey be going in motion here so that we can at least make sure that we know that they're in zone or in man. Uh, you can see Smith trying to play underneath. This is all day. This there is too go. easy for Mahomes. There's literal nobody over here. It's going to be another 15 yards before anyone's even close. <laughs> wow. Okay. Casual 32. 32. Yeah, just a casual 32. Just a nice leisurely Sunday stroll with Brittany, it seems, for Patrick Mahomes, like <laughs> right up the middle. My goodness. We were talking about how you can't allow that to happen to Lamar Jackson. You, you can't allow that to happen to a toddler. There was nobody anywhere near. Yeah, if that was Lamar Jackson, obviously he would have been running into the tunnel on that. Uh, <laughs> like... And it's crazy because, you know, Patrick Mahomes is not a slouch. He is not slow no. by any means. It's just that Lamar Jackson makes look fast, makes fast people look a little slow. It's fair. It's fair. Now, bringing the Lobo safety down is really that. interesting to me. So we're going to see if scalding or ugh, if Scantling gets audible here. And he, there is somebody over the middle, mm. and it is Travis Kelsey. One, two, three, four, kind of five, quadruple. You could even call it quintuple coverage right there. But hey, that's the Travis Kelsey factor. Maybe Taylor is up in the stands, Rob. Well, I, obviously we know <laughs> that he gets a uh, ability boost if uh, <laughs> if Taylor's around. Mm. So uh, second and goal, though, it is. Two and a half minutes left in the quarter. And this is what I was saying. Like, if you're going to run the football the way Kansas City has run the football, run the clock. Run this bad boy into the ground. Let's win this game like 14 to 7 or something. Because <laughs> right now, you don't have to you don't have to snap this ball until sub two oh! minutes. And then there's an interception again, trying to do crazy. Wait, what? what in the world? What just happened? I am not 100% certain just stops the <laughs> stops the runner right there maybe a fat finger maybe uh just absolute elation off the back of the defense we're kind of watching like a mini replay in the back you know he takes about four steps and stops that was that that was an easy six points yeah easy and i think points, you know and with that play what happens is when you get into the red zone you get really close a lot of your money plays just like don't work as well because you don't have as much space uh, so some of these other plays that you see them running are not things that they are doing all the time. And then in that interception, that needed to go a little bit higher, a little bit more arc. He tried to kind of bullet that in, and that's why mm -hmm. they were able to jump under that and get the uh, interception. But now the Ravens look at it like, okay, well, first quarter, we'll be able to, ooh, and a stiff arm, them nasty. Uh, we'll be able to run this first quarter out at the very least and probably be 0-0, zero, zero, which is a far cry from what we saw in the first quarter of last game. Well, Odell Beckham Jr. getting involved in the passing game for the first time of these two games. Big bomb across the middle. Nelson Aguilar is the target. Nelson Aguilar not keep this ball in. Second and 10 with a stop clock coming up, Rob. Yeah, that was a big, big defensive play because uh, we definitely thought that uh, – Aguilar was going to have that one. Oh, no! Oh. Off target, and Cook is not going to fall down. Cook is going to take this one to the house. <laughs> so now both teams have interceptions on just some pretty wild mistakes, and it is we're not going to end the quarter 0-0. It's going to be 7 at least for Kansas City. Yes, yeah, so it's still 68 seconds after this one. Elijah Freeman and the Baltimore Ravens will get this one back after – Whatever happened there, Rob, I don't, I don't even want to <laughs> speculate whatever happened on the interception there, because that was that, that that was wide open territory, wide open spaces, not just a song, people. Yes, that was definitely an easy seven. But, you know, doesn't really matter now. Kansas City up 7-0. Baltimore trying to do some mm. more on the kickoff and uh, has really shown that they are able to, at any point, take these kickoffs to the house. Looked, looked pretty decent right there. Kind of got tripped up over their teammate as they were getting block attempts in. Lamar Jackson what is down. Is... Oh, my goodness. Karloft is making Jackson one with the dirt right there, Rob. <laughs> Second and 26. Have you seen something like that yet? Lamar Jackson with his mm -hmm. back foot on the end zone. Their no. end zone, I should say. 
Here we go. Oh, yeah. This is so. It's funny because now Kansas City is looking like the Kansas City we saw in the yep. first couple of drives of Game One when it was 14-0. But it's third and twenty-six. You just don't, oh, and there's a hold on top of that, and this is nowhere in the vicinity. So we're going to be declining this one. Oh, it's illegal contact. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Okay. No. Third and twenty-six erased. <laughs> Must be nice. Must be nice. Lamar Jackson with a much more breathing room now gets up. Mark Andrews and going to get the body turned around after this. A little bit of blocking from his friends. Nelson Aguilar makes this one a little bit of a better situation. Yeah, and that is, man, Kansas City had a real opportunity to bury the Ravens deep and were random, you know, Illegal contact turns that third and 26 into an, a drive continuer. So it does. So it does. Baltimore Ravens at home again. I believe we were home in Arrowhead for the Kansas City Chiefs in game number one. If we go to a game number three, of course, it will be that neutral territory. Ooh. And Watson comes up yet again. Number 35 could intercept the sun. It is just everybody's just throwing it to the other team now. I mean, they definitely have different color jerseys, so this shouldn't be as difficult as it is. But right now, it seems like nobody is able to uh, keep the ball in their possession too much, and Pacheco is going to just go back to work knowing that it's 7-0 them. They can run off another couple of minutes on this clock and make it way more uncomfortable with the 14-point lead than they had last time because there will be a whole lot less time for the Ravens to come back. Just a, a first half Freddy, perhaps, here from Cheviot Nick. We'll see if they're able to keep the hopes and dreams alive in the second half. Because as you mentioned, this has been Cheviot Nick in the first half of these two games so far. Uh, all, all day. It has been the Cheviot Nick show. Multiple episodes, back to back. It was syndicated. Yeah, and it's it's good for him because he doesn't have to give up on his run game uh as early as he had to last time. So he can continue to be very methodical with this thing. Um just take his absolute time, doesn't really have to snap it until like six seconds um, and can just run this clock into nothing. But right now, I think what's happening is just kind of going through the motions of knowing like, hey, this is what we do at Whoa. what in the world? Um, <laughs> this is what we do. We just operate quickly. But right now, I think he needs to take a breath and realize he does not have to operate quickly. In fact, operating quickly helps the Ravens. Yeah, yeah like snapping this one off before really really ready kelsey once again the bailout factor Woo! comes around again then just shakes one off in the middle of a spin crazy stuff first down plus a lot more there for kansas city yeah like let's there we go run some clock off let's get this sub 10 seconds on the on the play clock before we snap it and and see what you can do like now pacheco's speed it oh and Whoa. bodies him a little bit just gives him a little check says <laughs> eh. I will not be stopped today, 14-0 soon. And now it is a lot different uh, for the Ravens and for Baltimore here because previously when they were down 14, it was still the first quarter. The second quarter is almost out. So it is three minutes to go right here as Elijah and Freeman will be back to try and see what he can cook up here in the latter half of the second half, or the second quarter, excuse me, coming up in just a little bit. Butker putting this one. Right down the middle. No need down. Still going to take a couple of steps out of this one. That's pretty crazy there. And still getting out to the 22 is even crazier. Love it. Yeah, and it's just like a feast or famine thing, right? Like if the Ravens can get one kickoff and they feel like, hey, we can get one kickoff to the house, a game or one big kickoff, it's worth all of the three, four, and five yard losses. Mm -hmm. You know, so I get it. Math makes sense. And here we go. Looks like we're going to have a hold. Ooh. Ooh. Almost. Almost got a fumble there. Oh, another illegal contact. Goodness. Wow. Okay. I'm assuming this has got to be a user issue with uh, him basically touching one of these wide receivers in the, you know, when they're crossing over. the first. Wow, the first wide open. Whatever. Wide, wide open. Nelson Aguilar once again called Travis Kelsey the bailout factor. Nelson Aguilar is really more so the massive yardage play, but. I, I do believe that you're right. That is that is going to be, you know, that, that is not uh, luck of the cards or whatever. This is a uh, user error continuously. Second, uh, second time now. The first one, way worse than the second. And Jackson has all the time in the world right now. And as soon as I say that, there's a, oh, 
I was going to say, that looked like that <laughs> okay. could have been another interception. That would have had to go over the back, but... Yeah, wow. So, yeah, num number seven for the Baltimore Ravens. Almost playing defense there for a second and swatting this one down as it was tossed into double coverage. Speaking of, up and down, Mark Andrews gets it into the hands and then drops it on the ground. Two-minute warning coming up. That's a clock uh, stopped clock. And here we go. Hmm? I it's... color me confused. Yeah. The stop clock, he really, really wanted to stop it. He wanted to make 100% sure that clock was indeed stopped, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a Hill catch. Rolling out, and a, what a catch indeed. Minute 52 is plenty of time, but the crucial part here, of course, Rob, is that this is on the eight, right? This is the last 10 yards. There will not be any new set of downs granted to the Baltimore Ravens, barring any crazy penalties, you know, like the illegal contact. Yeah, and, and we see that... You know, Lamar Jackson and Cole. Well, never mind. I was going to say that's a touchdown, but there's a definite, way more, um, a definite focus on trying to keep Lamar Jackson in the pocket here. Um, so we were definitely happy to see that this is a good defense so far. We're looking at 14 to 7, possibly. I mean, granted, Kansas City could go back and score here, but um, we have seen that Kansas City is not going to allow Kansas, or Kansas City is not going to allow Lamar Jackson just to just dominate them on the ground. The defense here for Kansas City has been with their best foot forward thus far. Bridge Bowl, seventh point added on right there. The extra point is now kickoff return coming for Kansas City. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Baltimore got the kickoff to start this game, correct? Uh, Baltimore, they turned Steve the ball the over. Off. I'm trying to remember. I feel Probably like... still get it figured. Yeah, I feel like Kansas City received it and then they they threw the interception. Oh, that, yeah, because that, that was two interceptions right there thrown uh, by both teams, and then for whatever reason, player not uh, taking this one all the way down. Second quarter, minute sixteen left here. Just a little pause taken by the by the players. Got to hydrate something like this. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, if, just looking at the numbers, it's like man, sixty three yards passing. Kansas City's up fourteen seven. You'll take that, um, mm -hmm. but. With this minute 16, you really want to score. You, I mean, not three. You need seven to be able to do your best to put this game away. You don't want a situation again where the Ravens will be able to get the ball and be able to tie this game up. You want to bury them and force game three. He's Valdez Scanling put into the motion a little bit. Audibles upon audibles as Patrick Mahomes changes this one up, makes it what he wants. Now cooks up something nice with Kelsey. Kelsey... The big run now. I mean, we were talking about getting mm -hmm. them involved. Well, and that's the definition of. I believe that's probably your uh, average of like eight or nine yards per reception, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is what you need. Oh, my. I, we definitely see Pacheco, or that's McKinnon that time. Uh, but the running back was wide open that time and is able to get out of bounds on top of that. They do have three timeouts. So uh, there's, you know, definitely some mm -hmm. feeling of you need to get moving. Um, but you're on the 47. You've got 45 seconds. Everything is available to you. Uh, you just have to make sure that you do take your timeout if you get tackled in bounds. Jarek McKinnon, there was 10 yards right there. Now Mikol Hardman Jr. gets involved in the passing game for the second time in these two games thus far. 39 seconds. Clock stopped. First timeout used here for Kansas City. Yeah, still plenty of time. 39 seconds. You just don't, and I don't want to jinx him, but you just don't want to take a sack here. Does the caster curse exist? That's the question. And it does. That's a fumble on <laughs> oh, top of Folks, if you want blame pointed somewhere, I have Rob Gonzalez right here with me. Uh, Jeez. <laughs> feels bad, man, because Baltimore still has two timeouts. <laughs> so, you know, if they can get a big one here um, or they'll just take a sack instead. <laughs> hmm. All the twice, it seems. Uh, and didn't take a timeout. Just gonna let it run. So what it's gonna going end up Elijah being Freeman right now. I don't like that. That that is several several like patent mistakes, right? Like like there's yes. there's no there is no uh, there's no logic to that one, folks. 
Push it on to halftime after this could have been, uh, well, a different scoreline than 14-7 favoring Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, definitely some weird things happen there, but 14-7 for Kansas City. They are feeling very good, um, mostly because, again, they didn't play that great, but they are still winning the game. And, you know, you can't really ask for too much. You know, hey, if I have a half where I play uh, eh, only so good, um, to be able to still have a lead. And now Baltimore is going to be able to try to tie this game. But, you know, they've Kansas City's played okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, a minor misplay right there almost resulted in some more points. Just as Hill gets up to about the 22. No, okay, just the 20 right there. So you'll see a little air guitar celebration afterwards. <laughs> Gotta love that one. Gotta love that one. Here we go. And I, I do want to see the Ravens do something with oh, Lamar Jackson boy. and his feet um, because it has been shown over the last couple of, uh, well, what's five, six quarters? Um, that he can run and he can get you a lot and he can put a lot mm -hmm. of pressure. And when you're just sitting him back here, you've been getting more interceptions. The offense hasn't been as dynamic. So let's get Lamar Jackson, get him rolling and start putting some pressure on this uh, user controlled linebacker. Wow, that is easy. Yeah, Zay Flowers put it right in the little pocket right there. Lamar Jackson adds to his totals. A couple interceptions, though, to go along with the solo touchdown right here. That was Nelson Aglor earlier, Rob. It was able to bring that ball in with seven on the board. And Jackson sitting the shotgun again from the 40-yard line. As all, all day, the time Lord. in the world. What is this 89? Look, there's there's a you there was the, the computer uh false interaction right there. If you saw, they were just standing up pushing each other. <laughs> yeah, but you've got to hopefully have one of these defensive ends or somebody be able to get in here and and pressure Lamar Jackson. So he's just not like just sitting back there, just hanging out. Like, that, we can't have that either. Can't have that at all. That was so good for Mark Andrews. Obviously, you know, uh, separate equations or whatever, right? But Mark Andrews has dropped a couple of balls that hit him right in the hands, and those were crucial times as well. That set up a third and inches situation that Baltimore Ravens are easily going to transmogrify into a first down. Using the big words now, let's see if we can get a big <laughs> run. And then we almost... No trans. Wait, wait, he was. Yeah. He wanted to use transmogrify. Is that was? Is that what we're talking about? Transmogrify. I thought that was from. Uh, I thought that was from like Harry Potter or something like that. I can't remember. Well, I. I mean, <laughs> you're gonna start turning iron into gold, but we do have a touchdown now. Baltimore is on the board. Dobbins is gonna hopefully be able to see this convert into 14, and it does. Miriam Webster says that transmogrify is a word. It is. It's is when you the act turn of something... changing into a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. It was one of those words I had somewhere in the back, dark recesses of my brain that I haven't used in a while and pulled out that $5 word. Heck, that $10 word. I was going to say, yeah, if you've played some Diablo and some other role-playing <laughs> games, you all know about what, what that does. So anyway, uh, that, back that's to probably Matt. That's probably what I remember from. <laughs> from. Let's be honest. Most of the words I know are from video games. Yeah, of course, that's how it all is. And two minutes <laughs> and 36 seconds, and Kansas City is going to do their best to hold on to the ball, not do anything nice wild and crazy. And Ooh. best way to do that, start with Pacheco, a little stutter step, and he is going to grab a huge chunk of yards to get this uh, drive started. 200 total yards between the rushing attempts, passing yards, 85 rushing yards, 115 of them coming through the air. Pacheco back a little bit. Kelsey put into motion as this is a completely transfixed defense right there. You saw them completely cover each other and the players were not in a position to try and make defensive stops after that. Everybody in transition right there and not really body, it really anybody of your front seven like really with their feet set. Well, and we see a lot of motions like happen because of that so that you can get like this little like mush and sometimes the defensive players will pick themselves and you just get wide open running lanes and wide open passes uh so it is kind of shocking to see neither of these players really use a lot of motion rubs and picks rubs and picks it has yielded advantage for offense so far several times that's going to happen again as pacheco gets shoved around right there just pinballs a knocking down around him he's going to get out to the first down yeah and when it the game is close you you don't have to do anything 
uh, you know, different from what you've been doing before. You can keep mm. your running game. You can do the stuff to Travis Kelsey. You can go long. Uh, we saw Pacheco was going to have some of these negative plays every so often, but they are going to commit to this run game so long as the game is close, and we only have five minutes and 40-some seconds left in the game. We will not be scoring 91. Earlier. Just let you know. Uh, yes, we will not be scoring. That, that was literally about to, about to say that. We mentioned earlier, 92 total points in the first game. Uh, 28 right now is looking a lot more respectful. I mean, 92, that that that's like two full games. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Tie game, though. We have... We have uh, you know, there's that, that something else that has held true through these two games. It pretty, pretty close. Never really seems like it's decided until that clock strikes triple zeros. Bubbles and audibles. Out of Scandling solo. Dillo off to the right side. Slants inside. But the Baltimore Ravens defense is just eating this offensive alive, man. Yeah, and Kansas City just keeps running to these problems when they're just like, hey, we're up 14-0. Now all of a sudden they're back. And... On the drive that we need to score a touchdown, we score a field goal, and now it's like, okay, well, we have seen this story played out mm -hmm. before. Will the Ravens come back and score a touchdown quickly? Because this is essentially that's what happened last time. I think they scored a kickoff return last time, but um, the Ravens are, again, I would say not be in a rush, but they have proven that they like to do that. They just like to go fast. Okay, this is a really good start. Out to the 32, seven extra yards. I, I got to say, if we're calculating it out, 20 or 30 plus seems like pretty standard so far. The Justice Hill controlled, Eli or you know, Elijah Freeman controlled Justice Hill, excuse me, on the kickoffs here. Uh, not not a bad starting position mm -hmm. on the 32 here for the Ravens. No, and as long, and, you know, when they don't turn it over, they score touchdowns. So, I mean, it seems okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not against that whatsoever. Again, treating it more like an, another offensive play, even though obviously special teams right there. Second and five coming up. This quarter is over. Yeah, five minutes. And you can see the scoring very different, mostly because there's not as many pick sixes. But 17 to 14, can the Chiefs get a stop? It's really the name of the game right here. Uh, Three-point advantage. Feels like it's not going to yield much, but you mentioned it just a second ago, Rob. This is a Baltimore Ravens squad that was able to do this last time. Kansas City settled for three, came back, put seven on the board, and then just added a little bit more insult to injury on the end. Lamar Jackson really beaten feet to get to the outside. That's a first down plus, and another fresh set of downs as we keep those chains guys a moving. Yeah, and that's the kind of pressure you got to put on this defense. You need to make sure that they understand that at any time, any place, any world, <laughs> Lamar Jackson can take it to the house. Seriously. You go, go to the convenience store, pick up some med, some bread and milk, and Lamar <laughs> Jackson will just walk out and be running a touchdown right Please in front of you. Please throw the ball away. Oh, made out of. All right, second and ten. Will Kansas City keep trying to play this little middle zone so he can control it? Um, I think... I would assume that they would eventually, you know, run some kind of drag right across his face of that linebacker, but unfortunate. Okay. Huh. Third and 24, Kansas City trying to make a statement. And Lamar Jackson's got enough time to write memoirs in the backfield so far, not making a decision. The decision then makes him third and 24 after two big sacks. Really, really going to feel that on the offensive side of this ball. Steps all the way back. It's much more time this time. Aguilar. Oh, oh Aguilar. Okay, no, yeah, doesn't doesn't uh, secure okay. this one fourth and twenty four. And now, do you actually punt? No, we are going to go for it on fourth and twenty four. Trust in the defense here to shut down Kansas City, but fourth and twenty four is brutal, people. Right back to the same thing, because I was going to say, do not intercept that. Knock it down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that, uh, an interception would essentially wasted, what, 30 yards of space oh, way here more across than that. the Almost middle. Almost 40, 50 yards, yeah. Yeah, would have been, been so much. But Checo now off to the outside. Writing is on the wall. First uh, rush right here is going to keep this clock running, and Kansas City should do nothing else besides that. Yeah, and but we have seen multiple times that these players do not follow conventional wisdom. <laughs> um, we all know at home that there's still 3.30 left, so you do need a touchdown. So I can imagine that there is a world where you do want to possibly not run the football uh, because you want to score. 
Uh, but you definitely, whatever you do, you don't want to run out of bounds. That's the first problem. Uh, second Stopping is, clock, yeah, now. we do want to run the clock off, but scoring a touchdown here, as long as you can get some of this clock off, is going Whoa. to essentially end the game. What well, do you Pacheco do? Pacheco stays up right there. It's a good question. What do you do when, when I mean, you slam into him, that just stays on his feet. Mm-hmm. Oh, ten point game coming up here. Cheviot Nick, what a really, really solid effort of bringing this one back from the brink on match point in this best of three. Knows it. That's going to be now Elijah Freeman getting the ball back. Three seventeen, going to have to score and then get the ball back and shut down Cheviot Nick on their next offensive drive to still have a solid attempt at this game. Yeah, the good thing for the Ravens is uh, it is two possessions. They are used to playing fast, so. They're not going to have to feel like some sort of way like, oh, man, like we can't do these running plays that we normally do because we got to go fast. They, their scoring has just been lightning quick anyway. So for them, this is just a matter of another day at the office, but they just don't want to do take more than about a minute and a half um, to be able to do it. They would love to continue to. Oh, that's a drop. Unfortunate. Um, but they would oh. love to be able to get a couple chunk plays and just be able to get this converted. Looks like it was a catch as well. A little bit surprised on that one. A lot of people out, and this goes back to Rashad Bateman right across the middle. Solid little pickup, but as we notice, this clock still a run at 11 seconds of a now deleted previous. Lamar Jackson in the gun yet again. Steps back. Plenty of time. Nelson oh, Aguilar right steps out of this one and picked up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gotta love this game. Gotta love this game, dude. Hey, you know my guy tackles me. His, his left arm is literally inside of his teammate, and... Uh, and <laughs> that's going to be enough. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. A reasonable forfeit. Yeah. Technically able to come back at this one, but more so going to, you know, preserve the chronological resource. That is time, people. Yeah. Don't want to really have to show any more defense or any more offense. We can just go to game three, get this situated. And Kansas City came out, had a game plan that said, we are not going to let Lamar Jackson beat us on the ground. Um, and the defense essentially played that whole game the way they played the first couple of drives of game one as opposed to just like kind of just falling all the way apart uh so that kansas city is a much more formidable or formidable opponent to the ravens so for game three i mean it, gosh it just depends on who shows up on the on the uh, kansas city side I really think this is a question of whether or not Cheviot Nick will come out in the first quarter again and show the dominance that he put on display across games one and two. Because the question after that has been, can he hold on to that? In game one, that was a resounding no, a 10-point difference right there. In game two, was able to keep it up, keep this game low scoring, and another 10-point differential, 24-14, to 14, obviously with points probably going to be out of the score, barring the forfeit there, but obviously a 10-point swing going the other way right here. 90, 92 total or something like that in the first one. Only, uh, what, 38 in the second one here. So hopefully maybe a splitting of the difference in game number three. Yeah, I, I just imagine that it's going to be more of the same, uh, more of a slowed down, methodical type of game uh, because neither of these teams have really been able to show that they can throw it like really long. Um, lots of short stuff that kind of converts because of a missed tackle or, or whatever it is. Um, and But Kansas City has established that this run game is very real for them. Uh, but on the other side of the football, what happens when you're not running it a bunch with Lamar Jackson? Are you going to give it to your running backs? Are you going to be able to get Andrews involved? Uh, and that's what we need to see in game three. Nelson Aguilar was hands down the star wide receiver for both of these games for the Ravens here. You saw Mark Andrews get a little bit. Uh, you, you saw even some pitch plays to running backs and whatnot. But like mm -hmm. you said, just A, running backs not really involved that much. And B, nobody else besides Nelson Aguilar really getting searched for in the receiving core here outside of, again, Mark Andrews in the tight end right there. Getting ready for game three in just a little bit. We'll get confirmed onto the teams. I believe, yeah, I, I believe we'll get, uh, yeah, well, there, there's no reason why we should see a change. Excuse me. <laughs> Classic matchup here. I will, I will retract that statement. Buffalo Bills getting shown here for Elijah Freeman. Kansas City staying with Chevy on Nick. Yeah, and I think Elijah has just decided that, look, if, they're going to take away Lamar Jackson. Then I will, instead of, ha instead of having a running quarterback, I will have a quarterback who runs 
in the form of Josh Allen. So a little bit more accurate, stronger arm, and that might be able to be able to do a little bit more for them. And immediately the Buffalo Bills defense putting a negative three spot on uh, Mr. Pacheco. And it's also really hard to compare the receiving core, Nelson Aguilar, OBJ, and others <laughs> uh, of the uh, Baltimore Ravens with what Buffalo has created up there in New York. Your Stephon Diggs. I mean, just have uh, like just, just all Diggs. of the receivers there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Stephon Diggs is amazing, but all of the receiving core up there is great. Ooh, Gabe what a Davis great pass. Absolute goat. And, uh, Travis Kelsey right there, one for 33. Uh, as Kelsey just kind of beat his defender to the corner. And, and those are the kind of plays that I, I'm pretty sure are available a lot. Uh, if they're not going to double team Travis Kelsey and you get these kind of lanes, uh, they've got to decide what what are they going to do? Either you're going to have to bring somebody down to try to bring Pacheco down. And if you do that, you go to Kelsey or you're going to have to double team Kelsey and then Pacheco does that. So like, there's no really good answer here. And man, there was some room up the middle, but wasn't able to get that turn straight up. And five coming up here for the Kansas City Chiefs. A little bit of up and down so far. A little bit of struggle, a little bit of big pass plays. Kelsey is perennially the bailout here for Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Pacheco takes a nice one. Perfect pass, perfect catch. And a fresh set of downs here for Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, and having a linebacker trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Pacheco on those routes is going to be easy pickings for Pat Mahomes. Uh, so they're going to have to put some pressure here and you can see they're going to a three, four, and that does immediately give you some results. Single yard right there. Slower plays, but this has got to uh, at least partially be off the back of uh, the, the difference in teams being utilized now. Uh, well, we were talking to Jordi in week two, I believe uh, Buffalo Bills defense is, Damn near a cheat code in this. Now, as I say that, excuse me, <laughs> Noah Gray going to beat a couple of a uh, couple of different players out there in Kansas City. Going to put six on the board. And, and that play has been open on both sides of the field for all for both of the games that we've seen so far. Uh, and he has been able to take advantage of it. Uh, Cheviot Nick has been able to do that pretty much every single time. So that is one of his money plays. We have seen it over and over again. And now, uh, if this is. A reoccurring theme, but Kansas City is, again, leading. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Hardy out from here. First contact. That's going to be down to the 16. Maybe not the same kind of advantage that Justice Hill Ravens be resulting with. Elijah Freeman, obviously, now controlling the Buffalo Bills. Taking a look right here. To start out from moderate passes. That's really what I'm. That's really what I'm thinking to start this one off. Allen in the back. James Cook just going to be providing kind of bodyguard duties and utilize that bad. one perfectly. Oh! Diggs, Stephon Diggs. Rob was singing the praises earlier. Hey, maybe that's why. I, you know, double coverage there. I was thinking that that was going to be another interception for Kansas City, but this is why you switch to Buffalo because you can get Jared Allen to Diggs and just let Diggs make a play. A rounding round. <laughs> this is the same kind of mistake. Wide open in the why middle of the field, too. Okay. I was going to say, why throw it? But then Kincaid just gets, you know, let uh, let room to grow, right? Yeah, and it's as long as he remembers that he's Josh Allen and doesn't randomly start doing some Lamar Jackson stuff, uh, he'll be okay. But this is where it's going to convert. Like, can you convert these right now? Oh, and he can. Oh, th God. that's a touchdown. As Dawson knocks the big tight end. Tight ends once again helping to decide the pace of this game. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. 7-7 seven, seven right here under early, where we have another absolute barn burner on our hands. 92 points is the most, and that was game number one. That was a solid little, uh, solid little pace here. 14 points already. First three and a half minutes or so of this game. Yeah, and I, I just think that what happened is uh, Elijah just got frustrated with the drops that he was seeing when he was playing with the Ravens from, you know, Andrews had a couple of drops. Aguilar is Aguilar. Uh, so bringing it over to Buffalo, you're going to get a higher quality wide out, higher quality. Well, hard to get a higher quality tight end than Andrews, but maybe you're just going to get some better receivers here. Um, and that won't be quite as frustrating, but for Kansas city, they're being tied is right up their alley. That means they can keep running Keep getting Travis Kelsey involved and just stay with their offense. Pacheco keeps the 
Rushing game alive here for Kansas City. Only one, yeah, only one yard garnered on that one, sorry. Mahomes back in the backfield right now. Pass coming up, at least assumed. Yeah, Pacheco going to roll out right here. This one gets in the Kelsey. That's a first down plus a little bit more. Yeah, and again, I was, I've was i been seeing this a lot. These drag routes that you get Travis Kelsey on, if you have time, he's almost always open because no linebacker, no safety is running with him. Um, and they're not bringing safeties down to try to stop um, Pacheco. So it's just like, pick your poison. So, and this is what we said in the very beginning of the quarter is, Pacheco, you got to put somebody down in the box. Right now they're playing 4-3. Um, you've got to have somebody down there that's going to be able to stop this man. But if you stay in that 4-3 and you give time, Travis Kelsey should dominate. And we, we've definitely seen that so far. Kelsey even kind of helping to push Pacheco along for another little gain on the previous play into the first quarter. Now, coming up here into the second, and what is, uh, kind of seemed like a completely fresh, fresh slate for these two teams, Rob. Yeah, 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, we've got five minutes. We're on the 40-yard line, so if you're Kansas City, you would love to get a first down here on the ground if you could keep this clock running, but um, Patrick Mahomes it does have somebody open at square and is going to be able to hit Rice right in, well, almost right in stride, and then all of a sudden you like start doing something backwards, but <laughs> <laughs> you're on the 35-yard line. Clock is ticking. Just take your time. Another six inches ahead of space between him and the uh, defender there, the separation. He would have been able to turn it to the left post right there and at least get a lot closer if not put another six on the board. A lot of green in front of them. Another rushing play. Just kind of keep the Buffalo Bills defense on their toes as well, right? Mm -hmm. it, you just get into that pass, 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 pass kind of uh, play style, and eventually this will be figured out. Yeah, and we know that um, the for Elijah that he is able to get these picks. He's shown he can get pick sixes. He can do all of those things. So you don't want to give him too many opportunities to get back in his game like that. Sean Milano right there. And even across one, two, kind of three even defenders near them. That's Milano, I believe, able to get this one up. Another first down for number one. Yeah, that was super dangerous. Really was. A little pause here. Just trying to reconnect, guys. 7-7. Seven, seven. We have seen a lot of uh, a lot of back and forth here from Kansas City thus far and really doing a great job of mixing their rushing plays and their passing plays here together. Uh, hopefully not another disconnect, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> if it is right here, we'll be going forth and getting the same kind of situation set up for you guys that we saw in the very first matchup between these two. Uh, score was 7-7. Seven, seven. We had just started the, uh, the second quarter right there. Yeah, I mean, it's this is something that happens. I'm just looking and seeing, making sure that uh, it was a crash. It does look like the game does crash, but they're going to rebuild that one. But you see that these both these teams have been playing excellent. Uh, the defense is a little bit better. Offense is slowed down, but they're figuring each other out, and that's what happens in game three. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, you know the continual uh, exposure to one another, right? They kind of mm -hmm. have gotten an idea of what either opponent is comfortable doing within certain situations. And now after the third game, as well as like what time across these you know, four or five minute periods, what time in these games are actually operating. I kind of get an idea of like what they're going to like frequently going to go for so far for at least for Chevy Nick, Nick uh, again, has frequently been a, a Travis Kelsey moderate or even short pass that turns into a lot more than that. Now with a new team here, the, the writing is less on the wall for Elijah Freeman and what he wants to get done with the Buffalo Bills so far. That has been uh, Gabe Davis with a bomb. They have not incorporated James Cook literally at all so far uh, here for the rushing game for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, well, I mean, Buffalo kind of, well, and Elijah showed you when they were the Ravens, they really just weren't a running team like that. Um, but, you know, that's just who they are. They are a passing team that occasionally runs with the quarterback. But um, as they build this game, uh, we are going to go just a quick break so that we can give everybody a breath, let you go get something to eat, get something to drink. We're going to be back, and it's going to be just about 10 minutes. 